sorry guys, I'm, I'm just a little bit emotional. I finally listened to Selling England by the Pound 15 times, and I don't have to listen to it anymore. I'm so happy. All right, I'm exaggerating a little bit. It wasn't that bad. Welcome to Layer the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. On today's episode, follow up to my music challenge, where I challenged myself to listen to an album that I didn't really care for 15 times to see if it would improve my appreciation of that album. And the album that I picked was Selling England by the Pound by Genesis. Genesis was a band that I said in an older video, a band that I should like, but don't. And uh, someone in a comment, I think on that video said, hey, you know, you gotta listen to an album at least 30 times to really know if you like it or not. And thank goodness I didn't pick 30 times because 15 was enough. All right, so there were a couple of interesting observations uh, that I got from doing this challenge. One of them was when I originally thought of a challenge, and I think I had mentioned this in the original video, I had said that there's albums that I've had that didn't click with me right away, but after multiple listens, you know, they did click with me and they became some of my favorite records. Well, I think the difference was, and I had mentioned, I, I believe, A Matter of Life and Death from Iron Maiden having that effect on me. I was indifferent towards the album when I first heard it, kind of liked it, wasn't totally into it. Then I got sick, was laying around on a sofa a lot, so I listened to the album over and over and it just really clicked for me. Well, I think the difference between A Matter of Life and Death and Iron Maiden and Genesis and this album is that I'm already a huge Iron Maiden fan. Iron Maiden is one of my favorite bands. So for me to, uh, after multiple listens, to really start to like a record is not that much of a stretch. And I get why it worked with A Matter of Life and Death and it didn't work with Selling England here because I've never really liked Genesis. I've never been able to get into Genesis. It just never clicks with me, the Peter Gabriel stuff. I have a lot of friends that love it, but it just has never worked for me. And even on multiple listens, it, it made me realize that if I don't like something early on, and if I just in general don't like that band or that type of sound or whatever, multiple listens is probably not going to really help me become a big fan of that band or that album. Now with that said, before this challenge I probably would have given this record like a three or a four out of ten. After the challenge, you know, I did come to appreciate it more, but I'd probably still give it maybe a six out of ten. So I did grow to like it and I did find some things that I did like about the record that, you know, I wouldn't have said before this challenge. For instance, I've always known Peter Gabriel is a great vocalist, but I really appreciated him even more. His lyrics and, and his, uh, you know, his voice, I think is great. Mike Rutherford's bass playing, uh, it's something that I've never really listened to any of his bass playing. I thought there was a lot of great bass lines. Steve Hackett has some uh, cool guitar lines on here. Uh, just great musicianship, you know, kind of all around. Uh, Tony Banks, Phil Collins. So it did help me grow to appreciate, uh, you know, to appreciate some of the songs and some of the musicianship. And I do get why people could like Genesis and be really into Genesis. You know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things going on in the album and everything. So uh, the other interesting observation was when I was listening to it, I was listening to it mostly on Spotify because I don't have it on CD. And I was probably about five listens into it. I wanted to listen to it at least once a day. And one day I thought, you know what, I'm gonna to listen to the vinyl. And I had my wireless headphones. I have a receiver that hooks up a wireless transmitter thing so I can listen wirelessly to my record player. And as soon as I put on the record, I was like, whoa, it kind of made me sit up and it drew me in a little bit. I don't know, it just like, it was like, wow, it just brought me in a little bit more. And I actually listened to it two times in a row. That's the only day, that, that day and, and today, the last day that I listened to it, I listened to it two days in a row because I was like, I don't want, I want to get this done before the weekend. Uh, but listening to it on the vinyl drew me in a lot more. And it's, it's not like the, 
you know, the Spotify version is like some horrible remaster, you know, dynamically crushed from the Loudness Wars or anything. Uh, but it was just something about the vinyl that, that made me more engaged with it. Maybe the topic of another video. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, getting into the album, there were again, there were some things that I did really like about this. Like I liked Dancing with the Moonlit Night, the opening track. I love that little folky melody at the beginning that Peter sings by himself. I didn't really do much research on this. I'm guessing that there's a lot of uh, references to England in here. You know, the title of the record, uh, the melody at the beginning. I don't know if people know down below. I'm guessing that there's a whole bunch of little things mixed in here that if you're from England, you would recognize these references. And maybe that's the reason why I wasn't able to totally get into it too. You know, overall for me, there's just not enough on this album that that's just not enough energy, not enough like riffs or things that just jump out at me. There were too many times where the album just sort of got like static for me, where my mind would drift and it was just hard for me to stay focused. I know what I like in your wardrobe. That was kind of okay. It was sort of catchy. I liked the rhythm in that song. It had kind of a cool little rhythm in uh, Peter Gabriel's melody. Firth of Fifth uh, is this here. Here's one. Uh, Firth. I'm not sure what that is. Is that a place? Uh, I didn't really care for that one. There was a spot sort of towards the end of or the middle of the song where it went into sort of like a keyboardy progish type thing that I was pretty cool and I, I did see somewhere that this is that's a song that they still play live from this record which surprised me a little I would have thought it would have been one of these others uh more fool me didn't really do anything for me I guess it fooled me <laughs> the battle of epping forest side two this one I really liked it might have been my favorite on the album I liked the chorus in it I just liked the feel of it this one had a little more energy to it you know and I guess maybe that's what I was missing from some of the others. After the Ordeal was a cool little instrumental that I thought fit really nicely after the Battle of Epic Forest. And then uh, the last two songs just didn't really do anything for me. The Cinema Show was okay. Isle of Plenty, I don't even remember it. I sort of remember it had like a folky type of thing and the way the album ended, it just ended on just a really, uh, just, just the way the album went out was just really nothing for me it was just sort of forgettable the last of the last two songs so all right there you go uh the experiment what i learned is, is if it's a band that i don't like i'm probably not 15 or 30 listens is not going to all of a sudden make me fall in love with this band but it did help me appreciate them more so i am glad that i did it because it's made me curious now i do want to go back and check out some of the other peter gabriel albums that i'm not overly familiar with to see if maybe one of them will grab me who knows maybe i just grabbed the wrong record all right so let me know in the comments uh what you guys think of selling england by the pound i know i have some genesis fans out there let me know why you guys like this record maybe what i'm missing about it let me know i always love to hear other people's opinion on things and if you did the music challenge let me know how it went for you okay until we see you again make sure you rock hard ride free